Um, so on our initial meal, they I just remember all the Alpha Company guys watching us get food and we're standing there and and we and my first meal as I was walking along with this and outside going to the stairs, I felt like I got hit by this um, wet mop. Oh, what was that? What it was was these big giant birds like um, ravens, hawks and all that. They would just sit up there and they would just had, you know, they were aggressive and just grab the food and, um, off your plate and just take off. They just stood there watching us and just sort of laughing like, hey, you know, sort of baptism of fire, you know, so to speak. But um, there is a bit of a macabre story why some of these birds were there. Because there have been so many people massacred and killed, there was just this overabundance of the population of these large birds had grown because they were eating all the, the dead bodies and that. So every now and then on patrol, you would have some body part just drop out of the sky or something like that from, because they've been carrying it and just go, oh, you know, you'd never imagine something like that in your wildest dreams. So we didn't do any mine clearing, but um, I, uh, I just remember I was playing soccer with some of the kids and um, the kids actually just, like I was running, you know, like, get this ball. Um, and uh, I just noticed no one else was around me and all the kids were like, because I didn't speak Kenny Rwandan, the kids, you just sort of, they actually started to learn Australian. In fact, probably the worst Australian, they were learning Australian army English, <laughs> you know, it's got a few profanities in it. But um, they they stopped and they were just basically saying to me, like, boom, that was standing in the minefield. And so, and I just remember, oh, I'll walk back the way I came. And I just kept, you know, cracking on with it. You know, they said there'd been mines in that area. Um, the other one that we had encountered was some British engineers. They were um, clearing down near a bridge um, and they cleared it all, they got rid of some mines, and um, they went down and um, the next day, and uh, one of them got blown up, so I wanted to put a mine there, and they were watching them, and they basically, you know, deliberately blew up one of the, uh, the UK soldiers, you know, he was missing his legs and all that sort of thing. There was this um, baboon, baboons are quite aggressive, and it would hang around the hospital, um, and they thought it had uh, rabies. And uh, they tried to relocate it. And they, um, so they put uh, Valium in an orange and they gave it to it. Uh, and this thing would go to attack people. And it had actually bitten people. And the precaution was you had to get the, I think it's around seven injections, painful injections you got to get for uh, rabies um, to prevent the thing. Because once you get it, that's, that's it as well. Uh, so there's a combination of the disease and the nasty animal. But baboons are like a really aggressive animal. And you'd be walking through the hospital and this thing would be in the middle of the hallway all of a sudden and want to attack you. And I think what triggered it, one day someone saw it and went to throw a biscuit at it, like they trying to be nice to it, and uh, it hit it in the head and it just actually um, kicked off and started you know, racing around and everything like that. So um, someone defended themselves and they hit it with a cricket bat. You know, every good Australian carries a cricket bat somewhere. And um, all it did was stun it and make it angry because this thing's basically 10 times stronger than a human. Racing around and uh, people went and hid and, it sort of, and nothing happened. And when it ate this orange too, it actually enraged it and made it get angry. It didn't even affect it. It did the opposite. But then one day it came come out on the... Um, these people were sitting on guard duty in a um, like a gun pit, and they were looking out, and it came over the top of this roof, and it just tried to start attacking them under there. The cricket bat came out again, and they hit it, and uh, then they put it in a bag, and I thought, oh, I've killed it, I've killed it, and they went and got someone and said they brought them over to to um, get this you know, thing to get it relocated or just get it hidden because they were worried, oh, well, we've, just, we've killed this animal, and then they looked in the bag. And it was, it was just sitting there enraged again. And I, no, and it, was, it kicked off again. So they kept hitting it with a cricket bat and it wouldn't, wouldn't go all, all away. Eventually, they disposed of it. Yeah, that's probably the nice way of putting it. Mm. But that, that was just one, you know, wild animal. I remember um, I went up to see the mountain gorillas. 
you know, if you're in a place like that, you know, quite rare to see these these animals, and you don't realise how big they are. Um, and I was certainly interested when you first get into country, they had a stuffed one in the um, lobby, they, and but also heard that they not just had murdered people, they were going up and just killing the gorillas just for the sake of it, you know. Um, you get up there and they tell you not to um, stare at them because like monkeys, if you look at their eyes, they get challenged. Um, just to look down and be obedient and never run, never run, they say. Okay, all right, cool. And walking up there and there's like the guides with us and there's a few other like doctors and nurses and I was the lead person. Um, I must have had alpha male syndrome, I'll lead from the front. But the reality was, I was like, this was, that was the scariest thing ever. And do because you'd see these things, they're like one the silverbacks, like one finger is about the size of you know four of mine, and it's just snapping bamboo and just chewing on it. And as I'm walking closer, it started beating his chest, and I'm like, oh, here here we go, it's going to kick off. And then it runs to challenge at me, and I just look down and I'm like this, you know, and I, I'm sure I could, I um, I was uh you know shaking as well, but um. I remember just standing there and then looking and it, it took off and you know, I did a few grunts of like, oh, you're, you know, you're nothing, you know, I've stamped my authority. I looked around, the people all that were um, behind me originally, they'd all run and I was just standing there by myself, yeah. So, um, and, and to wrap all this up, and, uh, and I had mentioned a few times, we went from a level, and I, I won't just say Rwanda, but Somalia, um, Cambodia and also um, Rwanda, those three trips, people deployed and they sort of got back and there was no real mechanisms um, there. It was just a lot of your mates sort of thing and have a beer type thing. But as years went by, you could sort of see, um, you know, some of it was, was a facade and people did have um, some issues. In particular, people I knew um, from that deployed to Rwanda, you could see they were a different person. And some of those people that I saw in Alpha Company when I first landed, you know, you, you could see just a difference. And me personally, I, I'm the best backyard psychologist there is, but uh, I could almost pick points where some of my friends had actually, their minds had stopped that day. They physically, had um, kept moving in time, but their mind kept reverting back to a certain point in time. So, uh, like one of my, my friends, um, I remember we were standing on this rubbish at Cabello. Um, his child had just been born that day in Australia, and we had, one of us actually happened to be standing on a dead baby. We didn't know because it was under the rubbish, and someone goes, Oh, look at that. And I was like, Oh, he, at that time, I think, had changed. And there was a few others, like when you had to go in and you're trying to save children and you're just basically retrieving bodies uh, and people firing at you and all that. And you can sort of, they will talk about those points, the, the sights, the sounds, the smell, so that their mind will always revert back to that point. And that's just me, like I said, backyard psychologist witnessing and experiencing your friends still moving with you in time physically, but their brains just keep going back to that point. They keep reliving it. Because where I'll forget the, the sounds, the smells and all that sort of thing, or you'll need something to jog your memory, they just keep over and over, sort of stuck in that point.